Hi everyone, welcome to Nature's Wisdom. This is season one, episode five. And today we are gonna be talking about indoor air pollution and what you guys can do to keep the air inside of your home clean and where these contaminants even come from. So there's lots of different areas of concern that we can talk about today, which we'll get to. But I first wanna just start out by talking about some statistics and really how bad our air quality is inside of our homes today. So. Most of us really haven't thought about this because, you know, we think about our food, we think about um, toxins and, you know, toxins in our products, things like that. But air quality isn't something that is first coming to mind. Um, But according to the EPA, Americans spend approximately 90% of their time indoors where concentrations of pollutants are often two to five times higher than typical outdoor air concentrations. So that's a lot. (laughs) It's basically saying that, you know, because we are spending so much time indoors, um, we're exposed to a lot more toxins and contaminants because of that. And it's two to five times higher than outdoor contaminants, which is crazy because we'll get into this a little bit, but it's like we're in this box, right, of toxic air sometimes and we're not having good ventilation and ways to actually um, release that toxic air and get good airflow into our homes. Um, Part of that too is because the way we build our homes now, they have become more and more airtight and the ventilation systems aren't well. Um, And also we have a lot of synthetic building materials too um, when it comes to these new and improved ways of building homes. So that is also adding to the toxic load of everything that we're breathing inside of our homes. Um, So sources of indoor air pollution, they include chemical off-gassing that can come from paint, cleaners, furniture, carpets. Um, It can come from mold when we're cooking inside of our homes, um, smoking, and pesticides as well. So there's a lot of different ways this can contaminate our homes and we'll get to kind of breaking down those individual sections a little bit later. Um, But those who spend a lot of time indoors, such as babies, children, and elderly, these people are at even higher risk for contamination from these toxins in our air and just breathing those in all the time. Um, as well as people who have respiratory or cardiovascular conditions, those people are gonna be at greater risk of um, feeling those effects more so. So health effects um, from short-term exposure from air pollution can be dizziness, fatigue, headaches, and then of course, irritation to your eyes, your nose, and your throat. But then long-term effects um, can even be contributed to chronic illnesses and actual issues that we'll get into below. But um, that's going to be something that we're really looking at too, because not only what are the short-term effects, but what are the long-term effects that are slowly building up in our system and causing some of those issues that we have today. So different types of air contaminants, let's kind of get into that. Um, The first one I wanna talk about is volatile organic compounds or VOCs. Um, Volatile organic compounds, they are chemical gases that are emitted from lots of different products. Um, We've already kind of gone over this, but paints, varnishes, cleaners, aerosol spray. So that's going to be like hairspray. And it's also going to be things like air fresheners, Febreze, things like that. Dry cleaned clothing, candles, furniture, especially new furniture, because they've sprayed um, flame retardants and things and even some type of um, pesticides, especially if you have maybe like a cotton or something. Um, that type of material in your furniture, if there's any pesticides sprayed on that. All of that stuff is off-gassing into the air. 
um, and then carpets as well. So VOCs, they're released into the air and then when they evaporate from these items, they're found in high concentrations indoors. So this is like a lot of poor ventilation and air movement is coming from this. According to the EPA, levels of VOCs have shown to be 10 times higher in the air indoors than in the air outside, which is crazy numbers. And it's all because of the products and the things that we are using inside of our homes. Acute exposure to these toxins can cause headaches, dizziness, visual disorders, or memory problems. Chronic health concerns from VOCs include damage to the liver, kidneys, the central nervous system, according to the EPA. So there's a lot of short-term effects, um, brain fog, visual dis disorders, headaches, things like that. But even think about the long-term and what it's doing chronically to our health. Um, one common VOC is formaldehyde. You guys have, may have heard some about formaldehyde, but formaldehyde is commonly emitted from paint, flame retardants found in mattresses and furniture, air fresheners, and when you're cooking or grilling. So health ramifications associated with formaldehyde exposure include an increased risk of certain cancers, um, such as myeloid leukemia and brain cancers. Those who have occupations that utilize formaldehyde, such as the funeral industry, in the embalming process, um, they have found that they have an increased risk of cancer um, that correlated with the years of their occupation. So however long they were in that occupation, there was an increased risk. Um, so really, really bad stuff for sure. And formaldehyde being one of the most common VOCs. Particulate matter. This is another um, form of air pollution that we're going to talk about. So mixture of solid and liquid matter, it's suspended in the air. And these large particulate matter, they can be visible to the human eye, such as smog, um, if you see somebody burning um, trash outside um, or a bonfire, that smoke that you see in the air, that is particulate matter that we can see with our eyes. There are larger particulate matter. And then there are some that are invisible to the human eye. Um, and that can be sometimes even like car exhaust um, fumes. Some, some of those are bigger as well. Um, but a lot of them that are smaller even can come from cooking. So that's one of the um, particulate matter that is most common inside homes is coming from cooking and that off gassing from whatever food you're cooking in your stove. So um, the most concerning particulate matter, which is PM10 and PM2.5, those are the ones that are invisible to the human eye and they can be easily inhaled into your lungs. Um, so they are small enough too that they can settle deep into your lung tissue and potentially make its way into your bloodstream. So this is really concerning for people who already struggle with respiratory illnesses or cardiovascular disease. So that's putting them at a higher risk if they have that type of pollution inside of their home. Um, particulate matter can make its way indoors from outdoor air, and that would be um, particulate matter originating from pollution, smog, and then, of course, indoors. Some of those can be from fireplaces, candles, cooking, like we mentioned, and cigarette smoke. Um, Particulate matter 2.5, one of the very small ones, is associated with an increased risk of preterm birth, low birth weight, increased infant and fetal mortality, reduced lung development and impaired function, increased likelihood of developing asthma, impaired cognitive function, increased lung cancer risk, and more. So that was a lot there. But basically, particulate matter 2.5, some of those really invisible um, particulate matter that's coming from candles and things like that, 
that is putting um, us at a high risk of disease and especially for our um, children and babies too. So, and then again, I talk about that here that um, with babies and children, sometimes they're at greater risk because they are inside more and the elderly too. So whoever is spending the most time inside, they're going to be at greater risk. Okay. So the next um, section of indoor air pollution that I want to talk about are heavy metals. Okay. So when we're talking about this heavy metal, such as lead is another type of indoor air pollution that commonly originates from old paint. So if your house was built before 1978, there's a good chance that your house was painted with lead based paint. Now, after that, it was banned by use from the federal government. So if your house is newer, Um, or if you haven't repainted over that, um, and there's still paint behind that, um, you know, you may be fine, but if it is an older home and you've repainted over this old paint, you may have some risk there from lead based paint. Now, the issue with this is when this old paint starts to deteriorate, it's causing um, flaking, dust, chipping that gets into the air ultimately and can be inhaled. And again, babies, young children, they are at greater risk because they are crawling around on the floor. They're, you know, putting things into their mouths like that is a big risk for children because of that. Um, So the kidneys, they take the greatest percentage of lead followed by the liver and soft tissues of the body, such as the heart and brain. So those are the organs that are most affected by lead. The nervous system is the most vulnerable body system to lead poisoning, and that can cause memory loss, poor attention span, headaches, and irritability. So it's something that we want to be aware of. Um, Keeping paint in good condition is something that you really want to look for um, and really keep in mind in your home, especially if you have an older home. Um, The next section that I want to talk about as far as air pollution, it can be coming from pesticides. So sources can be coming from contaminated soil or dust that is tracked in from the outdoors. So if you treat your lawn for any type of pest, if you spray your grass and it gets on your shoes, you're tracking it inside. Um, Or it can be something that you've sprayed inside of your home, such as an insecticide or some kind of pesticide. Um, it's This is interesting too, because you can actually have air pollution in your home from pesticides from stored pesticide containers. It doesn't even have to be open. You don't even have to be spraying that pesticide. It can literally just be in your garage or underneath your sink. And those volatile organic compounds and those off gases from that product and those chemicals coming into the air that is actually polluting your air. So even the stored pesticide containers is something that you have to look out for. Um, Of course, the main source, like I said, is going to be spraying directly for pests inside of your home. Um, There's lots of different types of pesticides, even fungicides, um, termiticides, disinfectants. All of those um, are kind of grouped into that pesticide category. And then according to the EPA, this stat, it said that studies show that 80% of most people's pesticide exposure occurs indoors. So it's coming from people who call the pesticide company and they're coming and spraying their home, they're bombing their home, you know, you all of these things um, to get rid of pests when it's really harming their health. Um, and it goes on to say too that measurable levels of up to a dozen pesticides have been found in indoor air quality in homes, which is crazy. Chronic exposure is known to cause damage to the liver, kidneys, and nervous system, as well as your endocrine system. So it's something that you need to be aware of. And lastly, I would like to talk about mold and how that is another source of air pollution in your homes. So 
when we think about mold, um, if we don't see a leak or we don't see any black mold anywhere, we think, okay, our house is fine. Um, but you would be surprised at all of the places mold can hide from even previous leaks that haven't been fully taken care of and moisture has gotten trapped in there um, behind walls, especially areas like bathrooms, under sinks, things where there's a lot of moisture and water. Um, but it's a really big thing, especially in the south where it's very humid. Um, it can be in carpets, HVAC systems, behind walls, ceilings, you name it. So anywhere where there can be moisture and that can grow. So mold, it can also release mold spores called mycotoxins. And these are really, really detrimental to our health. They can cause some serious health issues and chronic illnesses. One of the most common mycotoxins is aflatoxin, and that's known to be cancer causing toxic to the liver and has mutagenic effects on our health. Um, so that a lot of times that mycotoxin is inhaled or ingested from the air or even absorbed through our skin in your home. So something that's really serious to take care of if you see a leak or if you notice something going on in your home or if you smell anything, things like that. Um, mold growth, it's hard because like I said, it can be hidden and it's tricky to identify because it's not always visible. There's different colors, um, all kinds of things. So you have to sometimes get a professional in there to really figure out if there is any mold inside of your home. Because a lot of people, you know, they're suffering from, they call it um, sick bilging syndrome, where they're in a home or they go to work every day and they don't know why, but every time they go into a house, they're getting these symptoms and they call it sick bilging syndrome, but it's these mysterious symptoms that go away when they're actually away from their home. So um, that is a lot of times due to mycotoxins and molds. Now, if you suspect mold growth in your home, I would highly recommend purchasing something called an ERMI test, E-R-M-I. It's a mold test kit. Now, um, this is gonna be really good if you suspect something and you want to confirm that mold is indeed an issue inside of your home. Um, and I will put in the show notes um, a link to where you can purchase the ERMI mold test kit and where you can find some more information about that. So lastly, let's talk about what we can do to actually keep the air clean inside of our homes. Like what are some things that we can do proactively? Obviously, um, prevention is going to be the best thing, like preventing mold growth, um, you know, not using toxic products, but there are some other things, you know, we can do for sure. Um, so like we just said, the number one thing is let's evaluate what you have in your home. So if you're using toxic cleaners, swap that out for something more natural. If you're using aerosols and hairspray and toxic beauty products, air fresheners, wax melts, candles, things like that, those are all containing harmful VOCs like we talked about that are released into the air. So the number one thing is prevention. Take a look at what you have inside your home and try to replace that as soon as you can. And then, of course, furniture is a big source of those VOCs as well. And one tip you can do is if you have bought a new piece of furniture and you have that chemical type smell that you know is in there, you can set it outside in the sun for a couple of hours, let it get some ventilation and let that off gas all of those chemicals as much as it can before you bring it inside of your home. And then if you can, you know, there are great naturally made furniture. Um, you can get organic mattresses and things that will even be better than having to buy something that is synthetic. And, you know, this is something that can be overwhelming for people. So I would really encourage you make small changes. Just do these things one thing at a time. If you're trying to swap out your cleaners, um, instead of having to throw everything away, you know, if you can 
it would be great to buy all of it at once. If you can't, use up what you have currently. Once you're done with that, replace it with a good option. And that way, this is a lot more doable and not so overwhelming for people. The next thing that I absolutely love, and we have an air filter in our home, but I recommend the brand Air Doctor. So this is an amazing air filter that you can put inside of your home. It's just a plug-in standalone filter and it combines ultra HEPA filtration as well as carbon filters. So this is like one of the best filters you can get on the market. Um, As far as the HEPA filtration filter, that's gonna filter out larger particles such as dust. It's gonna filter out maybe hair from your pets, dander. Um, things like that. And then the carbon filter, that's going to be more for those VOCs and those gases and chemicals that are in the air that we can't see. So I would definitely recommend using Air Doctor. I will also link that in the show notes. Um, The cool thing about Air Doctor too, I will say, is that whenever I'm using mine and I start cooking, it will actually automatically adjust for the air quality inside of your home. So if there is a blue light, that means that the air quality is good. It'll go from orange, I believe, to red as the worst air quality. And whenever I'm cooking, I will always see it turn on red. And that will actually um, bump up its filtration and it will kick into high gear and filter out the air faster because it's sensing something is in the air. So I love that about the air doctor. And then another thing you can do is have plants inside of your home, specifically those that actually help to remove bacteria, VOCs, and mold. So some of these are snake plants, golden pothos, lady palms, and peace lilies. All of those are really good at helping to clean the air, and it's it's a nice um, thing to use to decorate your home. Um, And then another thing to avoiding wearing shoes inside of your home. A lot of us do that, but if we can avoid tracking in pesticides and bacteria um, and any sort of toxins that we have on the bottom of our shoes, it's going to keep the air inside of our home cleaner. And then last but not least, ventilation. You really need to make sure that you're opening up the windows inside of your home. If you don't have an air filter, use that, um, open up your window. And when you're cooking, you can have that good air exchange to um, really remove all of those harmful toxins. So ventilation is super, super important. Um, you could do that every day if you wanted to, even if it's just for a few minutes, it's going to make a difference. So I really hope that this was helpful just to show you guys what you can do, even though it's kind of scary to see the numbers of how much indoor air pollution we really have in our homes, but there are things that we can do. There's steps to take proactively to avoid that as well as, um, clean the air like using an air filter and things like that. So um, I will put some of those links, like I mentioned in the show notes, but if you have any questions, definitely let me know. Um, Give me a review as well for the podcast, or if you're watching on YouTube, I would love to have a comment and let me know if this was helpful for you. And I'll look forward to next episode with you guys. Thanks so much.